Hi everybody, welcome back to day five of farming the God Royal Monarch here in Borderlands 3. We're looking for the times eight maximum damage. We know the parts, we know the kill. Let's go for the one shot here. We're running a Peregrine fish slap combo. Oh, the one shots are in. So very, very nice first kill. And we're at 251 farms, now 252. And at 270 is when I'm officially allowed to start complaining that I'm unlucky. I've only gotten one times eight Monarch so far this entire time, and it's pretty close to God roll. It's missing an accuracy roll, and it's missing a fire rate roll. But other than that, it is perfect, and you could even argue that maybe not having fire is actually better. But I want that super duper fire rate times eight version. So once we hit 270, I'm gonna start complaining like crazy, and y'all are gonna hear it here we are in the last couple of videos we did some comments some reading some comments and going over that this video is gonna be really back to the original style it's me talking about the future talking about the plans and i actually i downloaded borderlands one um i downloaded first the game of the year edition then i found out that the new the new dedicated drops mod is only for the non Game of the Year, uh, Game of the Year Enhanced Edition. You can use Game of the Year, I believe, which is what I'm going to be trying. Uh, hello? Don't throw me like this. One shot him. Come on. Oh, okay. We can still one shot him. Just gonna make sure that we have our racks out at the right time. Hopefully here, he gets away. That's tough. That's okay. Once he comes back, we'll one shot him. <clears throat> if I, I don't know exactly what causes all the one shot shenanigans and like why I get it sometimes, why I don't get it other times. But overall, this build feels pretty consistent. There, he's gone. Clear out these other guys. I need more charges of my rack attacks, what I need. Okay, you're gone. And I don't know, I shouldn't even be doing this, but let's get out of here. That's 254. So I downloaded Borderlands 1, Game of the Year Edition, not enhanced, and I also believe I installed the dedicated mod, dedicated drops mod, which is pretty cool. I had no idea that Borderlands 1 had no dedicated drops, or I think it might have dedicated drops, but it doesn't have as many respawnable bosses. And I believe the drop pool isn't like, it isn't like shared out. I'm not too sure how Borderlands 1 works. To be honest, I never played all that much Borderlands 1. Slight delay on the, oh wow. I really thought that was gonna one shot. Here we go back to the old ways. When in doubt, spam it out. I should have a fish slap there on his arrival, and he should get one shot. There we go. But that means we do have to get rid of these enemies if we want to check out the loot. So make sure we aim our racks here. See, those racks completely miss. This is why rack attack builds in general, I don't think are like that insane. Look, look at how, just because he's against the wall right there. Luckily, Pet does a lot of damage. Look at that fire damage coming through. But you can always just throw our grenades to kill this guy, but... Still, I, I feel like at least part of that should have damaged him. That's okay. So, but this is right now we could be more efficient with it with different kinds of augments and skills and things like that. But right now we're specced into the one shot. Everything I have right now is is specced in for that one shot. So I went over the build pretty heavily last time. So I won't go too deep into the build this time. Just know I'm I'm using a Peregrine class mod to have my racks drop a fish slap onto him and then the fish slap um will always proc a fire dot because of my unleash the dragon relic and that fire dot does a lot of damage and because we're on mayhem 11 the fish slap gets mayhem scaling which will make the dot even bigger so the first hit is the the fish slap and then every hit after that is going to be the unleash the dragon fire damage and the whole rest of the build is focused around getting that fire damage and getting that uh, elemental damage as high as possible. So melee damage, elemental damage, incendiary damage. That's what we're going for here. Our shield could be a little bit better. I, I want a fire old god to make sure that that dot does the most amount of damage possible. But I actually have a radiation old god on. And the only, re only radiation I have in my build is actually from the anointment from that same shield. So I have on action skill and get 50% bonus for radiation damage on my radiation old god, which is actually a really nice roll. Um, which means it, no matter what build you use it on, it just will always have value. 
Just a little bit. Which is pretty sick. I've heard somewhere that the damage doesn't scale the way it's supposed to on the shield and grenade anoints, but that is what it is. So, I have Borderlands 1 ready to go. Dedicated drops mod enabled, I believe. I I think I I think I want to start a series with it and I want to play Lilith, but I don't know if I want to have all the the drops and everything like spoiled for me or not. You know what I'm saying? My I would be absolutely fine with it except for one thing. And the one thing is that sometimes a a boss or sometimes a a drop source will have more than one weapon in its pool. And once that happens, you start playing tricks on yourself. You start getting a little bit frustrated in your mind about you know how exactly how many drops does this boss have? And you have to do a lot of runs to find that out. And I don't know if I want to do like a million runs of every single enemy I come across, you know what I'm saying? So it's like it ends, it ends up being a personal decision. Another there we go. Got sight. the kill. Got it in time. No enemies spawn around. Fish laps go off. Thank you. Thunderball fist. All right, we go again. We're getting close to that magical 270 number. So I have it installed. Let me know who I should play. I right now I'm leaning heavily towards Lilith. Now keep in mind, I've started Borderlands One up plenty of times, but I have never finished it. Not even through the main story. Um, dang, I saw the legendary, saw the legendary class mods. You should always check out. And I'm starting to look a little bit more at grenades and stuff, but because the Paracrine class mod drops off a grenade at its location, it's kind of interesting to think about what kind of grenades can I attach to this bad boy. The fish slap is the best for bossing. But other than that, I really don't know. So let me know who I should play. I'm definitely leaning heavy Lilith because when Game of the Year in Hands dropped, I did get it. I did start playing Lilith. I was having a great time, uh, but then I started having memory leak issues with RAM. The game would keep crashing. I believe I fixed those issues on Game of the Year Enhanced, but there is no dedicated drops mod on Game of the Year Enhanced. I'm having, it's, just, it's tough. I like Game of the Year Enhanced a lot. I think it's really, really good, um, except for the memory leak issue. I was having problems with my old computer. And so before I even tried playing it on my new computer, I looked up how to fix that issue. Now the, the fixes are a little bit wacky. You can put in a command um, into one of your folders in your in your Borderlands folders. You can issue like a, a new line or something like that. It says, I think it's like no movies or no, it's in your Steam settings. You put in like no, no movie startup. And that's supposed to help with cutscenes, which helps with RAM. Ooh, come on. Give me times eight. Come on! 11,000 times four is nowhere near where we want it to be. But a different found, a different fix that I found was to run DXVK, which is something that... Something that you use to launch Borderlands and helps you with overall frame rate and stuff like that. It's like, a, I don't know what exactly it is, but apparently if you install it into your Borderlands one game of the year enhanced edition, it gets rid of the RAM, the RAM issues. And I was running around the areas where I was crashing as Lilith and I wasn't having any issues. A meager life, a so, whoa, Flax voice there. Did you hear that? A feeding great. So. I think game of the year enhanced is definitely playable. It's just that I don't know if I think dedicated drops is kind of worth now, but game of the year enhanced has a lot of things going for it. It hasn't the biggest thing I think is not even the minimap. The biggest thing is that the FOV slider, the FOV in borderlands one is all out of whack, all out of whack. It is so zoomed in. It's hard to see what you're doing. Whereas game of the year enhanced has that nice fat FOV slider, which is super sick. Game of the year enhanced also has famously the minimap, which is obviously a nice quality of life upgrade. And I know there's other uh, features in the Game of the Year Enhanced. I'm not that versed with them. I think the Destroyer, after you beat it, has a chest. 
has a chest in in that in that location i've never beaten the destroyer i don't know what it looks like but i've heard that like that's one of the changes so i'm sad that i can't play game of the year enhanced while doing the dedicated mods drop because i want to do a playthrough as dedicated mods is a thing right like while dedicated oh you gotta be kidding me it's not a reset angle is it i don't think so all right let's just toss grenades to get this job done quicker Who wants to spawn huh you're gonna go away and you're gonna go away too do this the old-fashioned way and then use our use our rack attacks on this guy it's gone monarch me looks like a rack commander okay and who's glitching out so much jeez i wish i knew like some of the better purple weapons but i never really didn't use legendaries in borderlands 3. So I'm excited to try Borderlands 1 dedicated mods, dedicated drops, but I just, I really would rather play Game of the Year Edition. It's a tough choice. I'm, I'm leaning a little bit. I was thinking maybe Mordecai. I had played Mordecai, didn't make it all the way through. I had played Brick, didn't make it all the way through. I think I've tried Roland, but I've just, I've read Roland's skill trees, and it just does not sound that fun sounds fun if you're like if you're if you're role playing roland in a in a party where you're like the veteran friend who has the tech and you've got a bunch of newbies it can play roland and be like hey or stand in my circle and it doesn't have to be a bunch of newbies it can be like stand in my circle you get ammo regen you get healing it's like oh sick i love roland's turrets yeah you do but for a solo playthrough i just it was glaring to me that he had a lack of damage that's massive damage by the way it was pretty glaring to me that he had just a huge, huge lack of damage. But when I read through Lilith's skill tree, I see damage. And I see versatility. So I worked my way down the skill tree doing only phase walk stuff. Like, if I wanted to do only phase walk stuff, could I do it? Or would I waste points? I think you do waste a couple points in the middle tree. Other than that, it seems like it's pretty cool. And getting that bonus fire damage is really, really nice in the middle capstone. If you know what I'm, if I'm saying, what I'm saying. So. Pretty, pretty sick. Okay. We're getting there. 268. So, someone did ask me, and I probably will go over it if I do another comment section video, about my odds. My odds are calculated by simply going to Loot Lemon and looking at the variations in the parts. So... I look at the parts, I determine which parts I would accept on my final god roll version and which parts I would not accept. Right? That's the first thing I determine. Once I determine that, she's still get a one shot. Oh, come on. Strut. Strut back. Let me throw the fish slaps. We got there. Oh, a little bit late. Maybe I should start it on the first strut. So don't don't wait for him to strut back. Start throwing. I mean, I know, I know it always depends on. Look at, look at these racks. They're so inconsistent. Maybe if it's like just a Serena or something. The racks are so inconsistent. Good night. That's like an old school kill that we used to have to wait for that all the time. Not as much anymore. Not as much anymore. I forgot what I was. I forgot what I was talking about. The, the parts. So, let's say for instance that. Like for this farm, the f the first part is the the body. Okay, so if I go to my cryo version, right? If I go to my cryo version, the body it will always roll at least two accessories. Sometimes it will roll three, and I believe it's at an eighty three percent chance. So no matter what, when a monarch rolls on the ground, if there's a seventeen percent chance that on the very first part it's wrong. But I do it the other way. So I take 0.83 and I multiply that by the next odds. So it's the same odds for the second part. So times 0.83 again. I have two or three accessories here for the barrel. Then the grip is like one in something. The foregrip is one in something. But if you're using... I don't actually do... I try to stay away from using decimals. And I try to stick to only fractions. And so I take the numerator which is the amount of acceptable parts in each category which most of the time is one but sometimes is 
um, more than one and I divide it by the denominator which is the total amount of parts that are uh, available and you get your your odds and you just if you convert it to a fraction that's one over something if you the the simplest you just convert it down to its simplest form whatever the fraction you get is you try to get one over something and one over 270 and that's my 270th run we didn't actually get it you can also what i found works the same is you take all the decimal odds and you multiply those all out together and then when you get to a final number you do one divided by that number and it gives you the amount of expected runs but this is not this is just me just like sitting in my chair trying to remember how to do math when i was in high school you know what i'm saying because the only math i've had to do at uni um wait did that not go up we should be at 271 now the only math i've had to do at uni is statistics and i mean i've done physics and that kind of math so like i've done a lot of math but not just like simple what not just simple algebra you know okay let's go again those look like strong racks right there oh yeah nice all right let's go so i plan on making a borderlands one playthrough I'm, it's, it's it, for some reason it's making hit the button twice i wonder why a little bit strange i'm gonna have to keep an eye on it it's just acting a little bit weird this is what it is though all right let's go I cannot believe they made they make they still to this day make Borderlands games where bosses don't respawn. Named enemies don't respawn. Like that's that's the magic of the world. You gotta have all the enemies respawn. It's just a just a random thought. Like the fact that we even need a Borderlands three dedicated drops mod in the first place. Well, not a Borderlands three, a Borderlands one dedicated drops mod in the first place. I get it that it was never a thing, but. I don't know. You could just have someone do it. Like, these games are such gems. I get that they don't make as much money for you anymore. And so, like, as, as soon as you put a single developer in your team and task them out with making a dedicated mods update for your Borderlands 1 game, you are essentially throwing money into the drain when it comes to pure sale value because no one is because anyone that's going to get that update already has borderlands one right no one's going to go out there and buy borderlands one unless they do but i don't think so it's gonna be very little i think you probably lose money based on how much you're probably paying that developer maybe but having someone that could just jump on there and like throw on just get bosses to respawn you know like, the tech is already out there because the mod developers figured it out. You know? It might have taken them a lot longer, right? It might... They might have... It might have taken them. That's my thing. It just came out. And it's been how long since Borderlands... I'm not sure how long they've been working on the project. All right, let's just start chucking now. I'm not sure how long they've been working on the project. But it would probably take them a, a, a pretty long time. He actually gets away. Like, that's, that's the craziest part about that. All right, Rax. Prove to me that you can do something here. Okay, you failed once. Let's see if you fail again here. Gotcha. Get him, Rex. There we go. Final final rack goes out. This should be the one shot. I really have to deal with more lads. Is there, is there even a monarch on the ground? Hey, stop hitting me. Should be hitting my pet. Safeguard. Okay. Keep it moving. It'd be really sick if we can get just dedicated drops in the game of the year enhanced edition, you know? But it's a pipe dream. It's never going to happen. Because the game of the year enhanced actually does feel like pretty playable. Like, I don't know. It feels good to me. Let's go. Do you just. Oh, those one shots feel so good. Thank you very much. 
But I would love to do a, a Borderlands 1 playthrough. Except the thing is, I'm not going to be, you know, hyper-editing these playthroughs, I don't think. You know, and I'm also not going to be that efficient. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to sit there and do a whole bunch of exploration, probably. But what I most likely will be doing is taking every single side quest to completing it. Right there and then. Grab a car and go. Which I think is cool. And I would love to, you know, make a map for myself or something where the enemies are. Like the ones that can respawn. That'd be sick. But these maps already exist on the internet. No, I'm pretty sure they do. At least I've seen a couple from Borderlands 2. So. All right. And by the way, the last thing I sh that I should add for the odds is that there's a pretty big number in there. And by big, I mean small. And that is the drop chances for Kilovolt to drop as a monarch in the first place, which is only 16.5%. So that's why our odds aren't so great. But we're getting runs done really quickly now. And I know those, you can get this... The Monarch drops a 50% drop chance from the tr from one of the true trials. Which might be the way to go. I have faith in Killavolt to give me what I want. I know that he's like thinking to himself, I'm never going to give it. I'll never hand it over. But I think over time, he'll come to realize that if you just give me the Monarch, I'll leave. You know, I ran an imperfect Monarch on this flak for a very long time because it had consecutive hits on it. He's like, yeah, but you you put out a video that a thousand people watched that that showed him how to abuse me at a level seventy two character. You're you're an asshole. And with this, for that, I say I'm sorry, bro. But I mean, have you listened to yourself talk? All right, here comes the one shot, surely. No, one shot, I, I swear it's random. A little bit late in my tosses, I think, here. Just tell me we hit him, we did. Okay, we hit him with something, good. Don't die to your fish slaps. Stay on the outskirts, check the loot. Get oh, hoarder front loader, is this if you read on it? You read? Let's see. I don't think it will. Nope, okay. I'm looking for a U-Rad front loader for obvious reasons, but I don't think you can get U-Rad on a front loader. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think it's a weapon only anoint. Okay, we are 282 drops in, or 282 farms in, and we can officially start saying that the game is we're getting robbed. Okay, a little bit late. Let's see if we can still get the one shot. Boom, later, kid. I don't know what if it's if it's time based or what. It just feels kind of random. Maybe if I, maybe it has to do with his shield. I'm thinking it might have something to do with his shield. Maybe we aim it away from his shield and see if we always get the one shot. Get the vault. Yeah, this, this strat is pretty sick. I'm not gonna lie to you. Pretty sick. Big fan of it. All right, so let's shoot it. Wait, just one second and shoot it left. Okay, so far left side has worked every single time. I mean, that's two times. <laughs> but we're here. I've been having fun recording the, the Roguelands videos, the, the mega ultra super randomized ones, but I've been having crashes. Someone told me that physics can cause crashes today in the comment section, so I'm gonna go see tomorrow if that in fact is the case boom later kid that in fact is the case oh a trevenator with 150 over 90. let's take a look at this bad larry let's see three body accessories has to be super good two barrel accessories it probably is missing one the grip is reload time, minus damage. That could be, it could come standard because it's a pretty big damage drop.
Okay. How's that site look? Is it always the same site? No, it's definitely not always the same site. I'm a big, big Trevenator guy. It's probably my favorite, my favorite underrated, underused weapon. So, excited to have it. 150 over 90 is a super good anointment on it. Because you're going to be, it's a shotgun. You want to one-shot kids with it, so. Mitosis Hunter Seeker me. I'm still looking for that radiation Mitosis Hunter Seeker. Okay, shoot it a little bit left. Away from his riot shield. It always works. <laughs> Even though it looks like it's going straight through his riot shield. I'm at 6k Iridium. Just from doing this farm. That's... That's pretty sick. I'm, I'm gaining quite a bit of Iridium. Which is a big deal because that is 24 rerolls. So if we can get ourselves 58 rerolls. So I'm not sure how much. That's 14,000 Iridium. 14,500 Iridium. We can not necessarily guarantee ourselves the anointment. Any anointment that we want in any weapon. But we will guarantee ourselves... Um, the average odds of getting it. So hopefully we already in stockpiles go up and up and up here in this farm because then I don't have to hit rocks. I would love it. Love it. And you could I know you could always go to the slaughter shaft to farm. But the rock strat is just so much faster. If you're gonna do slaughter shaft farming, it's like just do rock strat. I know that you're not farming vault card XP at the same time, but I'm farming vault card XP now. I shot that one a little bit right. It doesn't matter. Racks came flying in. It's a big part of why I'm running through the pile, through through the loot piles. I just want to make sure this is working as intended. 288, I think we're still good. The counter is still, still rolling, still popping. Hey, I, I, I've, I've grown completely numb to the fact that I'm just spawning in and, and one-shotting killable, to be honest with you. To me, it just feels like, you know, you're just playing Borderlands. Boom, that's that first rack hits it stuns him and that second one comes in and just boom Gives him the work even though it might be the fish slap that does it. It looks like it's the second rack, which is the cool part Now not every rack is going to drop a peregrine usually it's one rack per per pack you send out Although it might it might be hoove us it Might be hoove us to actually slap on a second augment we've been kind of swagging and just doing that augment but let's throw in a second augment to get additional rack charge and better rack cooldown but actually i might want to send out two additional racks instead two additional racks might increase my initial hit damage which will give me more of a chance to one shot so i think i will switch i think i will switch to additional racks and we do cryo racks instead of fire racks because cryo has a higher multiplier against shields than fire does so we want to do as much cryo damage as possible and i believe our our, our fish slap will do cryo damage i'm not 100 percent about that we got now we got some additional racks so as they hit them we'll do more initial damage and we don't get a one shot immediately okay something to think about Something to think about is the fact that we didn't get a one shot immediately right there. What did you drop me? A nine volt? Nah, I'm out of here. Let's try this again. If we don't get a one shot, I mean, it's it could be any number of reasons. If we don't get a one shot here, having additional racks might not actually be good. I mean, do I have to keep reloading my garden angels? What what is with that whole like have to reload thing as you launch in? Wait one moment. Rack. Okay, you're gone. Grab my Iridium. I should see how much Iridium I'm getting out. I was at 6k like a few minutes ago. I'm gonna guess I'm at 6,100. 6, I think I think in that time I got about 100 Iridium. Let's see. Yeah, 6133. Okay, I also have 14 diamond keys. I'm waiting for a time to rip them all at once. I kind of want to turn it into a video. And turn on my butt stallion milk and everything. Just like go completely ham. 
Everything lands at the same time. Oh, ho, ho. what's really cool and something that makes me really happy about this build and is that we are getting a lot of our damage from our pet. Our pet is giving us five out of five in barbaric yop. So 200% bonus pet or 200% pet bonuses, which is why we are getting a bonus 30% elemental damage, which is a big number for elemental damage. You can say, no, it's not a big number because you get 100% from anointments. That type of elemental damage works differently. The old, it's like having an old God, but better. It's multiplicative elemental damage to all elemental damage you're doing. So it's really, really good. So the fire dot, the, the unleash the dragon fire dot that it's, I'm using to one shot the boss, hopefully. It's catch. Watch this timing. Oh, pretty awful timing to be honest with you. It just barely got away in time. Plus a couple nades. Let's just, let's just spam some nades out there. Hopefully these these lads will die. Later. Let's keep the nades coming. Keep the action skills rolling. There we go. Pretty simple. I wonder what that... Am I being irradiated? What is that... Yellow... Aura around my screen? Not too sure, but... I really like how this build utilizes the pet bonuses that, that Flack can get. Which I think is one of the coolest things that each pet gives him passive bonuses. Genius idea. It's a genius idea. Completely evolution or completely revolutionizes pet gameplay. We're not getting as many one shots, I don't think, with this setup. Let's just do. Let's just do the, the additional charge. The first one's out a little bit early, which means he might dash away. Nope, because we sent out the second one, we get the kill. It's actually important to have additional rack charge and better cooldown for this fight. In case, you know. 295, holy cow. We are not getting that many times eights, which is tough. But the one times eight I, I did get was noise. It was noise, but I would love a nice juicy maximum damage one. This one I did get was max damage, but it was not max everything. Which is crazy to think about, right? Like, what, you didn't take it? Even though it was max damage? Correct. It is sitting in my inventory. Because it doesn't have the... It doesn't have max damage. It doesn't have the fire rate. It doesn't have the... The accuracy roll on it. It's like, wait, did you really need the accuracy roll? Maybe not. But I want it, you know? Just slapped on me. Oh! The fact, the fact that it's not always a one-shot, and that still sometimes isn't, makes each one-shot still, still rewarding, you know? Like, I'm right at that precipice of being strong enough, like, where it's not boring, but it's still, but it's still, like, rewarding. This is a good spot to be in your Borderlands character. All right. A little bit early. Let's see if it gets the job done. Oh, yeah. That gets the job done every time, every day. Every day, every day. Kill the wisp. We go again. Hmm. There's been a lot of... uh. There was a lot of Borderlands for news after at PAX and then after PAX and then things kind of slowed back down we haven't heard a lot about uh, the game there's been a bunch of shift codes there there was a shift code for 10 diamond keys and 50 golden keys now Randy he said something like oh come on times eight me it is a times eight okay let's go ahead and take a look at the parts Please, oh please, could it be on the 298th run that we get ourselves the god roll? Let's see. Okay, it's missing. It's missing, I believe, the fire rate from the body. No, it's not the fire rate. What's it missing from the body? It's missing something. I can check it. Damage, 
accuracy and fire rate. I think it's missing maybe damage from the, from the a crit damage from the body. I think from the barrel, it's it is it's got all three, which is nice. It, its grip is the the multi projectile one. Its foregrip is wrong. It's not damage. Its rail is reload time, which is perfect. So, unfortunately, it's not a perfect. We will be dropping it from our inventory. But the body... Let's take a look at our other times 8 that we got. Times 8, times 8. Where do you ever... Yeah, see, we have a 9,000 times 8. So the max damage is 9,016. But it's fire rate. and So it was missing fire rate on the top. So, but we got the damage rolls in both of these, which is nice. We're just missing accuracy from up here, and we are missing fire rate from down here. But the foregrip is the proper foregrip, or the grip is the proper grip. Everything about this, the rail is perfect. Everything about it is great, except it's missing fire rate and accuracy. So, as much as I like that drop for us, it's not going to be 298. It might be 299, but it's not going to be 298. That's tough. That's a tough drop. A tough drop indeed okay let's get over there pitter patter let's get over there let's see Plop. yes so much damage and this farm this farm is really rewarding to me 300 rounds by the way everybody clap this this farm is pretty rewarding for me because Kilovolt, and I've mentioned this before, Kilovolt is immune to shock damage, which means you cannot just revolter cheese this guy, you know? You cannot just slap on the revolter and say, I've got it. You have to come with a plan, and he is a boss that if you do not one-shot, like completely one-shot, he can take a while to kill. He, that, he has an immunity phase. He has a very long, like, dash away. And even if you get through it all, he still blinks back and forth. So it could take, take you a while to take him down. And he has mobs. So he can be very annoying to fight if you're not prepared. And, it's, and because he's immune to the revolter, you have to have a build that can, can do something to this guy if you want to farm it efficiently. So it's really fun for me to get to that point where like I have a build where I can just drop down, send out a rack, kill him, and repeat. I don't have to wait around for his immunity phase, which is super, super, it's like super rewarding that I I put that together without Revolter. You know, I get it, oh, you use Garden Angel instead, but I've never used Garden Angel. This is my first Garden Angel build I've ever used. Like to me, it's still extremely rewarding as a play style. As a, as a weapon that just can enhance my damage with things that aren't guns, I love it. I love the fact that it exists. Love it. I get, I can totally get why it's like, uh, I've seen on Reddit and stuff like that, people saying it's the most, probably the most broken gun that they've ever released, which I, can, I, I could see it. Same down a little bit, throw out the racks. There we go. Oh, he gets that one moment. He gets one moment, but like it looks like for when he's staggered, and then that second dot comes in. It's like boom, boom. It's pretty sick. Pretty sick. So I've been wondering if I can do this without unleash the dragon. Get this one shot, but I don't think so. So I, that that second big hit is the fire dot. So watch, watch closely. The first hit is the fish slap. First hit, fish slap. Second hit, fire dot. As far as far as I'm aware. What I can do is I can try taking off the unleash the dragon and put on something that might be pretty good here, like a. Icebreaker Commander Planetoid. That looks pretty good. 
damage against frozen and see if this can get the job done i think i already hit my counter up i won't hit it again and see if this gets the job done let's see I don't think it will, but the Icebreaker has area of effect damage on it, 55%, which should make my, my fish slap do a good amount. Wait a moment. Toss racks. Let's see. First hit, second hit. Nope. Pretty good. Pretty good. But not nearly as good as the fish slap. Not nearly as good as the Unleashed Dragon. I, I, maybe if I had extra melee damage on it if i had like better rolls on something because like this one right here is a pretty nice sh schluter if i could use revolter but i can't right now so let's go back to unleash the dragon it's a part of the build it's what makes the one shot work so i mean this is a mayhem 11 boss catch oh he's like you're gonna you're gonna disrespect me by using non meta tactics this is what you get you don't get your precious one shot well it turns out it doesn't matter brother don't get blown up by my own fish slap get in there get the iridium and get out 306 brother hmm. but after the monarch i'm not too sure what my plans are with flag i think what i'm gonna do is skip the monarch re-roll the anointment to get something that's good like i think fade away active would be probably pretty good because the weapon damage on it is a little bit low on the weapon card we could boot, boot uh buff that number up a little bit more that'd be kind of sick but i think i would also go for other anointments maybe even a u red and try that out but Again, I could try a whole like a whole bunch of different kinds. The thing about Urad is that with the times eight, I would like to be using a Vladov Company Man with magazine size on it. And you can't run the Vladov Company Man and Deathless at the same time, which means you which means that you would have to run a front loader to make use of Urad twenty four seven. And if you're using a, a front loader, you can't use Revolter. So, URAD is cool if you can utilize URAD. If you can't utilize it, then it's not so cool. So, specifically, the Monarch times 8, I, because I want to be using a Revolter and using a Vladoff Company Man, I don't think that I want a URAD times 8 Monarch. Personally, imagine if I get like a like I would take any element, but imagine I get like a fire one. Oh, I could just take it the grave ward and just do like the most heinous things. But I mean, I would love a corrosive one as well because of the existence of the revolter. You don't really need shock weapons for bossing, you really just need fire and corrosive. That's really the only two you need. I get that some bosses have niche resistances and the, like having a one of everything would be nice, but for general purpose use, you only really need corrosive and fire. Shock is not that necessary when you have revolter. Okay, go down. Aim a little bit low, get a more direct line. Lower travel time it speeds up my farm. Red Queen. I remember the Red Queen being like... It was like broken on, on launch. I think the YouTuber's name was the Glitching Queen who posted it. But the, apparently the thing was like shredding through multiple layers of the model. And it was like passing through and doing like just like a bajillion damage. Interesting. It was an interesting concept. Let's look down. Toss racks. Look down a little bit less. Toss racks. So let's hope that my pet doesn't do too much damage. Only 600. He doesn't even do a mill. What's up? Nice flip, bro. When that when that loot room's open, when the loot room opens up, he's like, I guess where I'm going. To the red chest. Fine. Maybe we should start opening up this red chest. Let's 
with a Schluter would be a more effective red chest, and Butstein Mill could be a more effective red chest. But that is the, like the mini game, isn't it? Like really heinous. Like I've played it a couple times. It doesn't seem that fun, and don't you have to play it for like a while to get the the Butstein Milk? Okay, aim at that one right there. Nice direct line from Rex. There we go. Oh, but the red chest stays closed. Okay, let's get my iridium. Ooh, ooh, get over there. Give me my iridium. And I'm also looking for a times 25 stagecoach, but the, my issue is that when I'm farming something else, I don't want to be looking at every single purple I see. So, rip to the stagecoach farm. Rip to the stagecoach farm. Alright, go here. Drop, look at a little bit low. Get a nice direct line. And plop. Good night. Ooh, times eight me. Hmm. It's a pretty low damage times four. Okay. Looking for a 9,016 times eight. If it's non-elemental. If it's elemental, I have no idea. I'll have to check out all the parts to make sure that it has everything. But now that I know the parts, it's a lot easier to not have to reference like the loot tables or like, like an online source, you know? Gotcha. Okay. We good? We keep it moving. 315. It's just not enemy to complain that much, but like game. <laughs> what do I gotta do? I've been farming this guy for five days now. This is good. This is gonna be my longest farm ever. For a weapon that's like kind of a niche use case, to be honest with you. Until I get myself at least a. I mean, I could go. Just think. Terror ammo regen might still be the way. But I'm happy that I have. I have a times eight with less fire rate than the normal times eight with terror ammo regen on it already. So my. My times eight. Oh, no, I don't. Did I drop the wrong? No, I, di I mean, I didn't drop the wrong one. Do I, do I have another times eight somewhere? No, but what I did, I, d I, didn't, get, I didn't get terror on it. But what I did do is I did sla slap on my terror and my regen. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay. So, because I do have gear that can that can help me test to see if my monarch can handle or, or if terror ammo regen can handle the upkeep of the monarch now on our first test and it was it was a times eight without fire rate with a, without a fire rate roll even at three stacks terror we could not um and that's without revolter active right and revolter speeds up your fire rate a ton which is making me think um, to myself that really this is just gonna be kind of like a bossed specialist but uh, another big reason oh vault card level up let's go go to, straight away to my vault cards open up my chest three keys please three keys three keys three keys th one key I look yeah only one key i'm trying to get i'm trying to get a, a melee guardian angel honestly i just want i just want all different kinds of guardian angels to be honest with you all different variants all different kinds of guardian angels because it's such a versatile weapon. Anytime you're doing anything on any character that isn't shooting guns, the Guardian Angel is it, which is super sick. I would love a bladed Guardian Angel with um, action skill and melee damage, because that would that would take the build I'm running now and boost it even further. Because it can still get boosted a little bit further. A times four, 12,235... Which I believe 12, 8, 7, 5 is the highest damage times 4. Let's go ahead and check it out. 12, 8, 7, 9 is the highest damage. So unfortunately, that rack attack 1 is not going to be... Is not going to be it. I had someone let me know that... If you're really doing a rack attack, you still want to be using something like a light show or something like a, a monarch or a shotgun, like a butcher or something to get back your rack attack as much as possible. When 
Although I do agree. And he's like, he should. I think it was the argument was like, you should take Megavore. Um, because I don't take Megavore right now. So I do agree that is a good way to do it. But if I have enough action skill cooldown, I would prefer not to have to take Megavore and put my points other places. And that way, I could always just run around with the Guardian Angel. You know what I'm saying? So to, to finish this build, something I'm going to need. I mean, I would say like the Stinger is typically the shield of choice. Um, because the Revolter is a little bit overkill as far as damage goes. Because like this, right now, this is no Revolter. You know what I'm saying? So, Revolter is a little bit overkill as far as damage goes. So, a lot of times, the Shield of Choice is the Stinger, which does melee Novas around you whenever you use it. Which is fantastic, because the racks are not so good at close range. So, the next part, the, piece, the next piece of gear that I'm probably going to go get is the Stinger. But the Frozen Heart is really, really strong, I think, for the same kind of uh, strategy. Frozen Heart, you, you basically wipe out everybody around you anyways. And especially because now I have an area of effect Schluter. That looks look like a pretty insane roll. The skills, the, do you, typically the less skills you have, the more insane the roll, but... We keep it rolling. What I might do to spice up the, the run, you guys, you're, and trust me, you're not going to be ready for this and you have no idea where this is going. I'm going to change the mission that is read on screen. You heard it here first. Instead of going to the plan to return to Casa de Timothy, we're going to go to where it all started. Stop bomb launch and go to launch facility. I'm crazy, I know. Okay. I'm down a little bit. Later, kid. Just got a conference call. No, thank you. We go again. Imagine if... Imagine if the odds for farming kilovolt were just a little bit better and we got more monarchs. Could be a decent amount, but nowhere near what I want. Someone should go back and count how many monarchs I got. Do a research project for me. Pro bono. One rack is all you need. Legi... 9 volts. Yeah, because the, the 9 volts in the... Uh, is in his dedicated drop pool, which is so sad. So sad. Okay, so we're at 53 minutes into our farm. We're at 323. Let's try to get to, th um, at the very least, 330. And try to push into the 330s as much as we possibly can. Let's go hyper efficiency. We can do hyper efficiency for seven minutes. Don't run forward until after the one shot. Over too quick. Okay. The loot drops. We check it. We run for iridium. And then we leave. Boom. Quick. Speed. We are speed. Play right away. Continue. I'm already holding down the forward key. Let's see if that actually works. It does. And I start sprinting right away. Ooh, 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 ooh. Drop. Throw immediately. Let's see if that works. One rack's all you need. He didn't he didn't make it. Shout. Oh no. My efficiency. Start chucking. That's a hit. It's guaranteed hit, right? Don't go away. This is worst case scenario. Dang it. So that, that should hit. There we go. Toss one of you. I still have another rack available. Waiting for this person to drop. Gotta aim a little bit low if I want to hit him, I think. Whoa! Back off, brother. Guy's going for the big bash. He's like, yeah. Yeah, I survived all that time. I'm, I'm feeling strong now. Bro, they did. Just drop the Monarch times eight, God roll, and I'll be on my way. And it won't bother you for a long time until like 20 years from now when Borderlands 5 is super dog, dog water. And everyone's playing Borderlands 3 still. And I'm here for times eight of each element. Just give me my one, and I, I, I swear I'll leave you alone for a long time, brother. It's like, okay, fine. I'll give you a cryo one. I'm like, oh, I would hate you. <laughs> Not that cryo is the worst. It's just that, ugh. I'd much rather have one that's good for boss red.
Okay, let's go. Okay, a non-elemental one. The highest percent chance one is the one I want the most, probably. Run forward. Go drop, just iridium me for a bit. Go, 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 Power Rangers! By the way, the black market vendor this week, from the 12th of September to the 19th of September, is the light show. Oh, you guys go check out uh, the, the location. It's on Promethea at an Atlas HQ. Guys, go check out the location. Get yourself a, a super good light show. I'm just gonna be patient this time. He goes forward, he goes back, he goes back to the front, this the center. Don't go anywhere, homie. Later, kid. It's just no mistakes. Get our iridium and head out. I feel like that time we didn't get the one shot in the beginning. Don't know why. I, I couldn't tell you why. Sometimes I one shot and sometimes I don't. But we just go again. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Also, now that I have the Peregrine class mod, I don't think I really necessarily need the anointment that I have in my fish slap right now. So my fish slap right now has on action skill start, regenerate one grenade, I think. And that's really, really nice for general purpose use, but if this, I want a fish slap that's good at boss shredding, which means I only need, need one grenade, right? I don't care about how efficient my grenades are. I just need one grenade, and that can boost this damage up with a different kind of anointment. Dang. Okay, let's take our time here. Goes forward. He goes back. He's going to burn the shield now. We can toss our racks. Good timing. Slap. Nice. Let's go. Do I get rewarded with big old monarch? Oh, Polybius and a nine volt. Okay, give me my iridium and we're out of here. Okay, 329. Not bad, not bad, not bad. We're making pretty good time through these runs. I think we're at, what, 251 when I started this? So, I mean, we are cruising. Okay, look down a second. I think just being on this side is cursed. Yeah, it's cursed. Go strut, strut, toss. Boom, let's go. Beautiful. I think being on the right side is cursed. If you stand on the right side, you won't get a one shot. But if you stand in the, in the, directly in the center or on the left side, guaranteed one shot. Here it goes. Check this out. It'll never not be one shot if you stand or if you stand directly in the middle and shoot and shoot your racks a little bit to the left. Scourge. Big old Scourge. It's the big old launcher. I just, I just don't think it's that great. All right, Kilovolt. Now, if you can save the fans from having the video get ended at the hour mark if you drop it. If you drop the Monarch, then we'll, we'll immediately we'll head over to Sanctuary, start rerolling that bad boy, and and go use it on stuff. So you can you can get the people what they want. I'm giving you this opportunity these last few runs to do that. Doesn't look doesn't look like he's buying it, guys. He's probably got one to two more runs. One to two more. Um, this 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 farm is officially more about him than it is about me. Okay. Now it's now it's his this guy's problem, not mine. Slap, one shot. I'm telling you, always shoot it left. Stand in the center, shoot it left. All right, I'll give you one more. One more chance, Kilovolt. Three, three, three. Surely. This is the this is the one third. Sorry, I punched my microphone. This is the one third to a thousand run. Come on now. Drop down. Look left. Catch. Okay, here comes my god roll monarch. No monarch. Well, we go ahead, we go to three three hundred and thirty-four, 
And that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit the like button, subscribe to see more videos like this one. And I'll see you all in the next one where we're guaranteed our Times 8 God Realm Monarch. See you all in the next one. Bye.